Welcome back to Season 2 of the Discount Property Investor Podcast. Our mission is to share with you what we have learned from our experience and the experience of others to help you make more money investing like a pro. We want to teach you how to create wealth by investing in real estate the Discount Property Investor way. Make sure you never miss an episode and download the Discount Property Investor app in Google Play or iTunes today. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, visit FreeWholesaleCourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. Thanks for tuning in. All right, guys, welcome back. Discount Property Investors. Mike, how are we doing today, buddy? Dude, I'm doing great. I uh, It's the first time we've had sun in about, what, six weeks here? Yeah, it feels St. like Louis, it. So. Yeah, it does, man. It really does. I feel good. Again, you get a little sun in your eyes. My chair's so. a little squeaky here, guys. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Yeah, so what are we doing today? We're talking about uh, real estate investing again? or We are, man. So we did an episode uh, at the end of season one that we didn't publish because uh, we had some technical issues, but it was... Oh, yeah. Yeah. the power of the JV. So we're going to redo that episode now. You guys listening haven't heard it, but Mike and I have. <laughs> <laughs> we lived it. We lived it. Whether That's or not right. whether or not it's going to be any good the first time or yeah. the second time. You know, yeah, to we be got determined. some good equipment this time around. So yeah. Basically, though, we were um, talking about the power of a JV and why you, as a real estate investor slash wholesaler should should know about JVs and should use them and focus on them. And mm-hmm. so I just did a deal that closed yesterday and uh, it was a JV. Um, basically it was a another investor that contacted us and asked us if we wanted to buy his property. And uh, Mike, you helped me with this one. So you'll know about this one. Mm-hmm. It was a real beauty. It was a real beauty. Real beauty so Clark. He, he contacted us and said, hey, you know, you guys want to buy this property, and I was uh, Mike was in the field, so I actually called Mike and said, "Hey, are you near this property? Can you do you mind running over and taking a look at it? It was vacant." So he did, and it wasn't anything that we were interested in. But he, this investor, also knew that we were wholesalers, though. He knew that we were in the business of buying and rehabbing, you know, holding rentals and mainly wholesaling. So he said, "Hey, I know you guys are in the wholesale business." Um, can you help me sell this property? And I'm not an agent, uh, Mike is, but you know, I just said, yeah, I mean, I can put it under contract and then market it out to my buyers. Well, let's clarify, I'm an agent, but I, I have a license, but I'm not an agent. No, I know you, That's, I know. You don't have any interest in listing properties. Just wanted but to clarify. That would have been one option, would have oh, been yeah. to list the property for him and then try to sell it. The other option would have been to wholesale it and get it under contract and then, then sell that contract. And so, to me, that, this is a great example because this property was in a, I mean, it's a its a definite rental market, probably C-class neighborhood, right. I mean, kind of lower end is what you call it. In that area, listing with agents doesn't make as much sense as just trying to work with other investors. Right. So this guy's savvy enough well, to know that. Well, not only that, but no investor wants to pay retail. So if you put it on the MLS, already that asking price is retail. Mm-hmm. Even if it's discounted to a good number, it's, hey, somebody else hasn't bought it yet, so. Right. It's retail. I need to pay less than that. Right. So you kind of shoot yourself in the foot sometimes by listing those properties. Long story short, the guy knew that I was an investor and that I was wholesaling, and he said, "Hey, wholesale this property for me." Like, I get it. He wasn't even really another inv- another wholesaler, but I just basically said, yeah. "Let's JV on it." Well, because that's what, and that's what we th- I thought initially was that it was another guy had it under contract, but it was just it was he just the it, owner. Though. He's right. just like I just need so to. So typically, you're going to have it. another wholesaler when you do a JV. And you're going to partner with that individual. But in this scenario, um, he just said, hey, you know, help me sell it. So instead of me sending him over a joint venture agreement, I actually sent him over a sales contract. But it's really the exact same thing. It just gave me interest in the property to be able to then go market it. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we found a buyer and we just got the check. The check's right here, actually. It was like, I think we netted 1700 bucks. So it was one of our smaller deals. But we maybe had two or three hours invested in total with Mike running. Well, like, exactly. Like Dave said. I was already in the field. I was up in we the neighborhood. There, right. Just drove by, grabbed some pictures. Dave talked to the, on the phone for a little bit with the guy, and then we blasted it out and got it sold. Right. Mm-hmm. Super, super quick little deal. Uh, again, not something to brag about, 
but a quick little deal. You make a couple uh, hours worth of work. It yeah. didn't take us a whole lot of time. And the seller's happy. He was able to sell the property. He that was texted a- me this morning actually and said, "Hey, I got another one. It's a four unit. Nice. Help me sell that one." So it was it was definitely worth our efforts. Nice. We'll have yeah. to ask him to throw a review out there for yeah, us too. That's right. That's right. right. So with that being said, though, the JV is very powerful. So that scenario that I just described. Um, wasn't the typical JV that was kind of a little bit separate but typically a joint venture agreement is between two people that are going to come together to try to get the deal done so in our world that means typically it's another wholesaler Mm -hmm. um, that that either has a property under contract or a buyer it could be either way and there's multiple scenarios obviously too but those are the two most common well I just want to say that we uh we use this so often we actually even built a whole little separate business unit on it called let's co wholesale yeah so true. we basically anyone we encourage anyone who has a property they can't sell especially here in st louis to check out let's co com, submit a property to it we review it and then say okay yeah we can we can sell this for you we're, we're gonna blast out to our buyers list that's true so we build a whole business unit around the joint venture just because we know it's such a powerful tool yeah, uh, so can, for for our list, all of our competitors are copying us at this point. So oh, yeah. we know we're doing something right. Oh yeah, <laughs> so imitation is the yeah. something flattery, some saying I don't know. Yeah, but it's a great way to uh, to get more deals in in the pipeline for ourselves as well as something you should consider as well um, if you have a big list or if you have deals. So let's talk to the new guy. Let's talk to the new guy. Let's talk to I the new that. guy. Yeah. So the new guy, you're think you're listening to the podcast. You've never done a deal before and you just you don't have anything under contract you don't have a big buyers list how do you how do you get started okay well how could i how could i leverage the jv how can i leverage a joint venture agreement it's pretty simple Mm -hmm. you go to somebody who has a property uh, another wholesaler again they're trying to sell it they send it out you're on other people's buyers list or something you see them they're trying to sell a property say oh cool um you're trying to sell that well hey i think i have a buyer for it whether you do or not, or just be straightforward. Just say, I, I don't know that I have a buyer. Can I help you sell that property? Can I try to help you sell that property? Right. They say yes, man, because they're, they're trying to move it. If they're a wholesaler, they are the definition of a motivated seller. They, mm-hmm. they got to sell it quick. <laughs> That's right. They got to sell it quick mm-hmm. at a discount. That they're motivated. So again, you go to them, you say, can I help you sell the property? They say, absolutely. I recommend trying to get a JV with them. We get a JV again with all of our partners because uh, again, it's the right way to do it. You actually have equitable interest, all that stuff. Mm-hmm get a joint venture with them, then you help market that property. Try to find a buyer. Try to just get in the game with that joint venture. If you bring a buyer to that wholesaler, they're gonna be stoked and they're gonna be happy to pay you on that deal. Right. I mean, it's as simple as that. I mean, you really don't have to go out and spend $1,000 or $10,000 on marketing to get a deal done. Yeah. The trick to this business is putting deals together, period. I think the, another way to, to sum it up to the new guy would be there's two ways to to approach a JV in the beginning. And there's really hundreds of ways, but I mean, it really infinite. But the two ways that I kind of first saw it whenever I first came into the game was I can either leverage the marketing efforts of somebody else with my buyer's list, or I could flip that scenario around completely. And I could leverage somebody else's buy, somebody else's buyer's list with my marketing efforts. So if I had a property under contract and I knew a guy that had buyers in that area, I could take it to him and say, hey, help me sell this and we get the deal done. And vice versa, if I had a bunch of buyers in an area that's looking for a deal, but I had no deals in that area and I saw another wholesaler marketing the deal in that area, I call up that wholesaler, Mike, for example, and say, mm-hmm. hey, I see you have this property and I have five, six guys that are you know, beating down my door right now to get properties in this area. Would you be interested in letting me help you sell it? And we could then split the profits. And the beauty of the profit split is it doesn't have to be 50-50. Typically we shoot for 50-50 or even Mm -hmm. 60-40. But I mean, I've done deals where I've made 10 or 15% because there may be a daisy chain of joint ventures involved. Oh yeah. There could be three or four people involved in the transaction. And then you may have real estate commissions and Mm -hmm. then it's like who pays the closing costs and but so what? You know, it, it typically whenever you do a joint venture, you're doing because you're leveraging somebody else's marketing, buyers list, energy, time, and efforts. I mean, that's you, kind of the thing, right? Right. Typically, you're, the idea is to do less work. Right. So you're not doing all the work. You're not spending all the upfront capital doing the marketing or whatever. Right. So yeah, you're going to do less work and make a little less money. But you're going to make some money. 
right? Which is great. And again, like we this love one, joint venture agreements. I mean, any property that you see on the discountpropertyinvestor.com or discountpropertyinvestor.com, there's no the in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if somebody comes to us and says, "Hey, I have a buyer for this property. Do you want a joint venture?" Our answer, 99% of the time, is yes. Bring me a contract. Because why would we want to a take the chance of not being able to sell that property? or B, have to wait. You know, time is money. So if somebody's like, hey, I can get you this deal sold tonight or tomorrow, versus us having to wait a week or two and then maybe have to not even be able to sell it and back out, or whatever the case is, it, you know, it limits your ability to make money and grow your business, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I mean, that's that's 99% true. I'd say sometimes we do like to shop our properties ourselves because yeah, again, we want to try to maximize, we our, maximize returns our returns right? and maximize our profits. But yeah, again, we're not shy about partnering with people and most people aren't, especially again, if they've got a property that they haven't moved for three, five, seven days. My favorite types of joint ventures are whenever another wholesaler contacts us and says, hey, you don't, you're not marking this up enough. And I'll say, okay, well, yeah. bring, bring me a contract. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah, so they mark it up five or 10 grand more and that increases the profit margin by five or 10 grand more. And then we split it 50-50. And at the end of the day, I might be able to make the same amount of money I would have made if I would have found a buyer on my own because they marked it up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so, many so that's scenarios. a win-win right there. Very, very yeah. powerful, guys. That's the main point here. Well, we I know. I think I know who you're talking about. We should probably have them on as a guest on the show. We should. We've done a couple deals with them yeah. just in the last couple months yeah. here. We'll have to, let's really. reach out to them, see if he's interested. Yeah, so joint venture contracts are very, very powerful. They're very, very, um, they're very, very simple agreements. I mean, mm -hmm. the one that we use is a one-page agreement. I think it's in the free wholesale course, maybe. 99% sure it is. Yeah, so if you, have, if you want to take a look at what we use, go to freewholesalecourse.com. There's... Um, Examples of contracts. I believe there's a joint venture agreement in there, assignment contract in there as well. Um, but the joint venture agreement is simply uh, one page and it just basically lays out the terms of the deal. It just says, hey, this is property that I have under contract that Mike's gonna then try to help me bring, bring a buyer in for. And in the event that he produces a buyer, he's gonna get X, you know, X percent of the profits on that particular deal. And uh, typically our, our joint venture agreements are not exclusive. So, you know, oh, that's a good point. That's a really good key. Yeah, because then it's like if, if I have the deal and then you come to me and you say, hey, I think I can help you sell it, but then I sell it before you do, I'm not going to give you the portion that's agreed because you didn't produce any. Correct. You didn't bring anything to the Correct. table. So that's kind of something that we always do is just say, hey, it's not exclusive. So if you produce the buyer in this scenario where I have the deal, then I'm happily happy to right. pay you. Obviously, you're going to get paid. But right. again, if, if you did nothing to procure the buyer, found a buyer completely outside of your efforts, I mean, it's, you know, try yeah. again. We're welcome to play again. We'll play on the next day. <laughs> that's you know? right. Try again. That's yeah. right. That's, I think, the, yeah. That's the, that was always my motto in wholesaling. Well, that one didn't work. We're going to try we're again. Try again. You that's know? true. That's true. So, yeah, the joint venture agreement, guys, very, very powerful. If you don't know, now you know. Check it out. Um, and again, you could probably go on Google and just type in joint venture agreement real estate um, and find a bunch of them on there as well if you don't want to use the one that, that we are giving away for free in our course. Um, yeah, so joint ventures, and I think that's uh, one of the things that we talked about is that we, as a company, I mean, the reason that we kind of came together is because we saw some other guys doing deals and we're overlapping, we wanted to share space, and it started out as basically a joint venture. We said, let's get just share yeah. some office space together, kind of a mastermind thing. We'll be able to do more deals just by being around each other and bouncing deals. Mm -hmm. So again, starting out with a, a much looser, non-formal, just a just venture joint ventures on several properties here and there is a great way to, again, build a working relationship with someone. That's so true. Uh, I mean, you could say, well, for the next again, a joint venture for the next three months, if you wanted to. Again, if you're starting to feel comfortable with somebody, yeah, and you, yeah. instead of getting married. Just go ahead and set up a little joint venture. We for had one. Well, we don't have it in, in place at the moment, but we used to have one with this company that was like a national company, and basically anything that hit our website, mm -hmm. they had the ability to market as long as they didn't undercut our value. Um, right, they we, couldn't sell it for less than, or market it for less. Market it for less than what we're marketing it for, and um, if somebody wanted to market up, by all means, go for it because if they see their marketing and our marketing, it doesn't make us look bad at having the higher price. So we didn't really care if they were to market up. Uh, but at a minimum, keep it at the same level that we were at. And um, they sold a couple deals for us, not, not that many. I think maybe two or three yeah, over the course of like five or six months. Um, we don't have that agreement in place with them anymore because it was kind of a hassle. But, um, you know, it was a way for us to reach a wider audience mm -hmm. for, our, for our properties.
So right again. So I think this is kind of almost another excuse buster sort of topic or episode. Yeah. If you don't have money for marketing, well, listen, we just talked about a JV. Go out there. You can talk to people, right? You can yeah. go network. Go get out there and try to put a deal together. Go do a joint venture. You don't have to find the seller, uh, or you don't have to find the bot. You don't have to find both of them. You don't have to find. Uh, both you of them. have to. You have to find one and help put put a deal together. If you do that and you partner with people, write up a little joint venture agreement, you can get paid. You can get it's paid. Pretty simple. Yeah, one of the first real estate courses that I had bought on wholesaling, you know, about three years ago at this point, was about about doing the exact same thing. It was about kind of reverse wholesaling for the newbie that didn't have a ton of cash to spend or invest into a marketing campaign, AKA yellow mm -hmm. letters and Facebook ads and pay-per-click and all that type of good stuff that we do now. But basically it suggested, hey, go find another wholesaler that's buying deals, that's getting properties under contract and just try to help him sell those deals. And if you bring a buyer in on one of them, you know, maybe you can get 40 or 50% of the profits on it. And that's what I did in, in the beginning a lot. And I still do it now. You know, we come across people that have, that are marketing deals all the time. And our buyers list is, is, is very big. It's a mighty list at this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, all we do is just make that connection. Just say, hey, we got a, a guy that's got a deal here and a buyer that's looking for the deal there and kind of put them, put them together and get paid. Mm -hmm. So I love the joint venture agreement. Mm -hmm. It's a game changer. Yeah, again, it, sh it could be a game changer for you. If you're out there and haven't done anything, haven't done any marketing, go help put a deal together and you're gonna get paid. All right. I mean, or you should get paid. You should, yeah. right, right. But keep it simple, guys, don't overthink it. All you're doing is just playing connector. You're just bringing in two different parties, well, sometimes three or four or five if you're daisy chaining those mm -hmm. JVs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you're just making, you know, you're just bringing people together that, that, that are, you're providing somebody what somebody else wants. You know, you're just kind of putting them, putting them together. So don't overthink it. Get out in the field, use some joint venture agreements, Oh yeah, and do some oh, deals. I was just gonna say you're pimping houses, right. providing what somebody else wants. <laughs> That's a good way to word it. I like it. All right, guys. Well, check out the joint venture agreement on the freewholesalecourse.com. Until next time, guys. Thanks See for you listening. then. Thanks for listening to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe to help us reach a wider audience. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, please visit freewholesalecourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. We would also appreciate it if you left us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Thank you in advance for your support. And remember, you make your money when you buy and you get paid when you sell. Now let's go build some wealth. <laughs>